All righty. Our uh, lesson today is lesson number nine, Water from the Rock is the title of it. And water is very important in to sustain life. Water and food are two of the most important things to sustain life and you know when we've seen we've seen uh, maybe we might have seen somebody out in a desert or seen it on on uh, uh, the news or something where somebody's been out in the desert or out in the wilderness where there's no water and how important water is and how people crave for water when they're thirsty. And uh, you know, we, and food's the same way. Hunger, hunger will eat, eat on you until it starts eating your own body up, you know. And so we see here that water and food is very, is very important to sustain life. And that's also in our spiritual life. Water and food is very important in our spiritual life. You know, if we, uh, if we uh, do not read the Bible or do not get uh, any, uh, 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 have prayer, talk to God, uh, 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 learn from things, we're going to starve to death and we're going to thirst to death. And, and and I'm talking spiritually. We're gonna we're gonna die spiritually because of lack of of what really sustains life. Life. Uh, that's t two things that if if you if you've ever been thirsty, you know what I'm talking about. I've never been thirsty to the point that that I'm about to pass out or anything. But I've been thirsty and. Oh, how a nice cold glass of water. It doesn't, you know, you can't taste water, it, you know. But yet, there's some water that is more refreshing than others, you know. And, and when you get a nice cold glass of water and you're really thirsty, it is, it is a relief. Well, when we're hungry for the things of God, and God shows us something. We might be reading something in the Bible and God shows us something. Why, you know, it's so refreshing. It's just like that cold glass of water when you're thirsty. And usually when God shows us something like that, we're going to meet it a little later in life. And it might be that same day that we can relate to Oh yeah, God just showed me that this morning, and that's what I needed today. And you know, it happens so often. And one thing about it, we can't store up food. We can't eat, 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 eat. Oh, I'm good for a week now, you know. Don't have to eat no more for a week, you know. Sometimes you might feel that way, but, but you know, you take the next day, you might go to the next day, but the next day you're wanting some more. And that's the same way spiritual food is. You, you just don't cram the Bible and everything, read the whole Bible through in one day, and well, I'm done for a week now. No, you have to read daily. You know, you have to talk to God daily, and it's a daily thing that you have to do. And you know, if, if that would have been the case, then the, as we as we read this lesson here, and probably we all probably know how it all went. But you know, if that was the case, then when the sweet water at Mara, they'd have drank, 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 and this wouldn't have bothered them. You know, this was some time after that. But oh, they stored it up. You can't do it. You're gonna find out they got thirsty, and they was. They was they was wanting some water, so we're gonna we're gonna find that out here. Water from the rock. Our memory verse is John four fourteen. But whosoever drinketh of the water which I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. Uh, I'm going to uh, comment on that a little bit later on there, long toward the end of the lesson. 
the adult emphasis is, here is, since the Israelites came out of Egypt by the miracle working hand of God, they have met one problem after another. At Mara, it was bitter water. At sin, lack of food. Now at Rephidim, I think I'm saying that, close to maybe what it is, it is no water. God solves each of the other needs by a miracle. God is always willing to supply our needs. You know, sometimes we may not get a need supplied and, you know, there's, there, it's, you, it's, on our, it's on us if a need is not supplied. Sometimes it may be that we don't ask. You know, you never know. I mean, you, you, you have to take inventory of what's going on and see what, what really needs to be done. And sometimes the lack of asking is why a need's not, not, uh, not supplied. Sometimes it could be worse than that. It could be complaining or something to that effect, too. And, you know, these children of Israel, you know, we know, we know how they complained and griped and one thing and another. But, you know, God was merciful to them because Moses was leading them as, as he went there. Okay, let's go into Exodus 17 and 1, and it says, And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness sin, after their journeys, according to the commandment of the Lord, and pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. My, what a predicament they are in here. Israel has no water. God was leading the children of Israel by a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. Okay? As long as that pillar of whatever, whether it was the cloud during the day or if it was a fire at night, when that cloud moved, they were to move with that cloud. And that cloud or that pillar, whatever, brought them to this spot right here. God full well knowing what was going to take place. And he knew how they were going to react. But you know, when we get our eyes off of God, all we can see is what? Problems. That's all we can see, you know. We get our eyes off of God, we can't see the hope. We don't have the faith. And we become scared and frightened. And it does not take a very strong person to be frightened, you know. If we want to be strong in the Lord, keep our eyes on the Lord. And keep in our mind, God can supply the God can supply our needs. But let's take that a little further on and really mean it. God will supply the needs that we have. That's what's most important there. That's what they kind of lacked was, yeah, God can supply the needs, but, you know, will he do it for me? You know, and they, they, they had problems there. But, you know, God was merciful to them. God was leading the children of Israel by a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. He led them from the wilderness of sin where he had begun to send manna. And before that, it was, it was Mara, if you remember that. There was water there, but it was bitter water. I guess they could taste that water, couldn't they? Yeah. You can taste water. You know, different waters does kind of taste. I said earlier you can't really taste it, but it's kind of like the white of an egg, you know. It's, it's, uh, you, can, you can tell whether it's good or not, you know. But anyway, water, that wasn't, and what did they do? They complain. Well, there's water here, but we can't drink it, you know, and they complain. Now they're in a predicament where there is no water. And uh, then, they, then they come here to this place. Here a new problem met them. There was no water. No water. They must have water to live. Just simple fact that 
we have to have water to live. So what's, what are we going to do? What does the children of Israel do? Let's go to verse 2. Wherefore the people did chide, I think I'm saying that word right, with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? Moses did not take this personal. You know, if we were a leader and people come complaining to us, how are we going to take it like that? You know, God's leading us along and then people start complaining to us. A pastor has, has to really be submitted to God because they meet up with all kinds of complaints uh, and seem like the bigger the congregation, the more complaints probably, I'm assuming anyway. But you know, Moses, here there was how many, how many people? 600,000 men and besides women and children and you know the women and children was probably complaining too so there was lots of complaining going on but Moses did not take that personal. He said and the people uh, he said wherefore do ye tempt the Lord and you know remember when uh, the people of Israel wanted a king and they came to Samuel and Samuel says what is this, Lord? They're wanting a king. That's not right. We know that's not right. You know, well, they're not complaining against you. They're not. They're not uh, uh, going against you, Samuel. They're going against me. You know, and that's that's what that's what it is. And so, before we complain to maybe our pastor or complain to one another, let's remember we're really complaining before God. That's what we're doing, and you know. Do we really want to complain before God? It seems like it's easier to complain against a person or something. But, you know, we're not really doing that. We're complaining before God. You know, and it kind of it kind of makes you stop and think. Well, I don't want to be one of them kind of people. I don't want to be like these children of Israel here was. Let's go to verse 3. And the people thirst there for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt and to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? Oh, they, had, they thought they had a, uh, something really against Moses. You know, they really thought that they had an issue against Moses. But... Weren't they following the cloud? Weren't they following the, the uh, uh, pillar? You know, Moses was doing the same thing. He was following that. But he was the easiest one to pick on, I think. And so that's what they decided they were going to do there. Lack of faith, lack of faith. It is good to be aware of one's position before God. Then one can make sure of the privileges of that position. To be alert to these is one aspect of faith, a seeing of what is not seen by others, a grasping of God's spiritual blessing, a grasping of His promises which makes them realities. Instead of faith, Israel had fear. And like I said, it don't take a very strong person to be fearful. You know? Be strong in the Lord. I think there's a verse saying that. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might because He's the one that's fighting our battles there. Israel had fear, blame, complaint, false values, and desires to go back to the old life. Oh my, oh my. Let's not get in that position we don't want to go back to the old life. We strive on, just like was brought out in the Sunday evening lesson on Pilgrim's Progress. Little Pilgrim, he, he had problems. He met a lot of problems, but he strived on. He made some mistakes, 
But he strived on and tried to get them corrected as soon as he realized what was going on. And you know, that's the way we need to be. We might trip and fall. Well, let's get up and keep, keep striving on. They did not see their true position before God. Their acts discredited God. Do we really want to discredit God? I don't think so. I don't think so. It is, it is always easier to complain than to trust. You know, that's kind of the nature of humans, is to complain rather than trust. Complain rather than look on the good side of things. You know, it's easier to be a pessimistic, I think I'm right, than an optimistic. It's easier to like look on the bad side of things than it is to look on the good side of yeah. things. But you know, when we're Christians, that's all we that's all we can see is good. You know? Yes, we have struggles, yes, we have trials, we have temptations, but you know, God's there. And what's any better look on than God? That's that's all I can say there. They forgot the Lord's victory over other difficulties. Let's not forget that. You know, God's led us through a lot of things. Uh, you know, led us through sickness, led us through financial, dis, uh, 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 financial uh, problems, uh, all kinds of problems. He's led us through that. Let's remember those things. And he done it before. Who says he can't do it again? What do we got to do? Trust him. Trust him. That's what, that's what we have to do. They turned to human help, to Moses, not as a stepping stone to God, but to demand of him. You know, and you know, we as a congregation can also do that to our pastor or to one another. And, you know, we don't, we, you know, the pastor's busy. Pastor has things to do. God has things for him. And, yes, he's there to help. And he's there to counsel with us. Let's take that counsel and apply it to our lives when that time comes. They said to Moses, give us water. They murmured, complained, and wished for Egypt. Oh, my. Uh, that's... This was sin. Moses called it tempting the Lord. Temp you all are tempting the Lord. That's what he was saying. It's not against me, but you are going against God. And you know, sometimes it has to be pert near that plane before people realize and wake up to the fact of what they're really, really doing. So we have to... We have, let's, let's be keen to God's callings. Let's be keen to what God has for us, whether, whatever, whatever predicament we might get into. Sometimes it's, it's for our good. Yeah. You know, like, like we've said before, we have a flat tire or we get started late. And, you know, probably not every time, but for some reason, God has allowed us to be late. And it's a lot of time to, to avoid an accident or to avoid one thing or another, you know. So, you know, when something happens like that, thank the Lord, I'm able to change the flat tire and get on with my way. Oh, yes, I'm 20, 30 minutes late, but, you know, we're going to still make it. It could be, a, could be worse. I know uh, that was one thing that my father a lot of times talked, talked about. You know, it could have been worse. I can make up a, a story that'd be worse than what we went through, you know, and, and, uh, and, you know, we go through. However, the people took the wrong way to get it. They did chide with Moses. They murmured against Moses. They wished to be back in Egypt. They asked, why did you bring us out to kill us with thirst? Well, you know, Moses didn't create water. Did, Moses didn't cause it to rain. 
uh, he couldn't cause it to rain. He couldn't cause it to do anything. All he was doing is following God. They wished, uh, why did you bring us out here with thirst, uh, kill us with thirst? Moses said that they're complaining and tempting. The, uh, Moses said their complaining was tempting the Lord. It doubted God. It was sin. We should not complain. That's pretty simple. We should not complain. Yes, we may say something that sounds like it's complaining, but let's not complain. You know, God has things for us, and we need to let our faith step out and show what we really are. Not in a boastful way, but be what God wants us to be. Do not doubt God. Do all things without murmuring. That's found in uh, Philippians 2.14. If something seems wrong, what should we do about it? P-R-A-Y. Pray about it. You know, if it seems wrong, go to the Lord in prayer. He can fix anything. Trust it all to the Lord. Don't get up and say, well, I prayed about this, but I think I'm going to go forward and do something on my own. We're going to make a big old mess out of it. That's all that's going to happen. Then he will give you what is best. Take it and be thankful. Thankful. When, it hap- when, when God takes care of it, we need to thank him for that. You know, because he could have left us where we was. But, you know, he didn't. And uh, he, he puts us where we need to be if we will keep our eyes on him. Let's go to verse 4. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? That's, what's Moses doing? He's going before the Lord, isn't he? Okay, isn't that a good example for us? I don't see a way out, but... God knows how this is going to, gonna, he knows the rest of the story. I think I remember uh, a um, Paul Harvey, and I heard a message on that, and I believe it was Sister Martin that, that, that preached that message one time at a revival, right uh, here in Lawton, the rest of the story. God knows what the rest of the story is. What shall I do unto this people? They do all. Almost ready to stone me. Wow. Wow. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod, wherewith thou smoteth the river, take it in thy hand and go. You know, there were some things Moses had to do. He had to go. But he had to do, take something with him. He had to take the elders. We don't know how many there was. But had to take some elders there. God pointed out to him the ones. And he also had to take the rod with him. That rod's going to be important a little later on in our lesson here. But what if he'd have forgot the rod? Or what if he would have forgot the messengers or or the um, elders? You know, nope. He done exactly what God said. Wherefore thou smotest a river... Take in thy hand and go. Verse 6. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock of Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And I like this last sentence there. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And we could say, and before God too. You know, he was not pleasing the elders. He was only doing what God told him to do. And you know, that's what, that's the only thing we can do, is do what God tells us to do. If we do that, then we're all right, no matter what it is. 
sometimes, Lord, are you sure that's what you want me to do? Well, if God told us to do it, we better do it, you know, because it may seem out of the way or coming around backwards or, or it may seem upside down, but you know, if God told us to do that, there's a purpose somewhere, somewhere, and we will not get what we want from God if we try to go around it another way. Moses did a better way than what the children of Israel did. He cried unto the Lord. Isn't it wonderful that somebody did stand up and cried before the Lord? You know, here, you know, went before God. You know, the whole congregation, the whole children of Israel could have just fell down and cried before God, you know, instead of complaining to Moses. And, you know, it would probably have been a little different situation or whatever. But anyway, this is what happens and this is, this is, this is, this is, this is what, what's recorded here. He asked, What shall I do unto these people? That's what Moses asked, uh, asked the Lord. Always take your troubles to the Lord. He can do anything. Isn't there a song, My God can do anything, anything, anything? My God can do anything but fail. That's true. That's true. Moreover, He loves us. And you know, that's when someone loves you or when you love someone, you want to do everything you can for them. Or they want to do everything they can for you. And you know, that's just human. But you take God... He loves us with a stronger love that He's willing. He wants us to be, He wants to see us prosper in our Christian life. Mo, uh, it says, moreover, He loves us. Moses knew this, so he prayed. The, no, the Lord knew about the lack of water. He already knew that, you know. If Moses didn't have to tell him or the, or the children of Israel didn't have to tell, tell God, hey, we're without water. Don't you see us, you know? Sometimes you wonder, but, you know, God already knows it. God already knows what we need before we even ask, but he wants us to ask anyway. All of this was his plan. He was ready to do something if Moses would pray. The Lord told Moses to go on ahead to the rock of Horeb, which is near Mount Sinai. He should take some of the elders. He should take his rod. God had used that rod to do miracles before. The water had turned to blood when Moses struck the river with it. The Red Sea had parted when Moses held it over the water. He used that same rod. He used that same rod. How he would smite the rock with it. Now he would smite the rock with it. Moses went as told. You know, you know, I've been told by my father, go and do as you were told. I don't know if you all have ever been told that, but you know, go and do as you're told. You know what you are to do. Now go and do it. Chores, whatever it was, you know. And, you know, when that was said to me, that kind of lit a fire under me a little bit. I better get to going because I've played around long enough. I better get to, get to going. And, you know, sometimes the Lord has to kind of give us that ump every now and then. Go forth as you are told. And that's what, that's what Moses did. Moses went as he was told. So, you know, and that's the best thing. When you're told, go. Go right away. Yep. The Lord had said he would stand on the rock. Moses struck the rock. Water came out of it. There was enough for all the people and their cattle to drink. The elders saw it. It was a miracle. Let's go ahead and read verse 7. And he called the name of the place Massa 
and Meribah because of the chiving of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Now the rock in Oreb flowed material water for, for physical bodies, just as the manna was material food for physical bodies. It was a type of the spiritual water Christ gives to, gives to bring life back to the soul. The rock was a type of Christ. They drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. 1 Corinthians 10 and 4. As the rock was smitten with the rod, so was Christ smitten by the death on the cross. As out of the rock came material water, so out of Christ comes living water. He gives water of forgiveness. Forgiveness. Redemption. Redemption. And new birth. New birth. I'm going to I repeat them to exaggerate on them there or to really get your attention. As Israel must have the water or die physically, so we must have living water from Christ or die spiritually. Do we want to die spiritually? Go without, go without that spiritual water. Go without Jesus and you'll die spiritually and it won't take long either. We don't want to do that. Just like you don't want to die physically when you get thirsty. You know, there's something in your mouth that, that or, or body, more in your mouth, I guess. I'm thirsty. I, I, I need something to drink. I'm thirsty. And you know, you take that. Well, in your spiritual body, there comes times when I'm thirsty, not for water, but for Jesus Christ. And you know, when that happens, we need to get right after it. Because if you don't take in literal water, you're going to be dehydrated. If you don't take it in spiritually, you're going to be spiritually dehydrated. Have you ever heard that before? I just thought of that now, but you know, it's, it's true. And when you get dehydrated, you get delirious. And you... You know, you start falling away and, and problems be seeing, can't begin to seem bigger than what they are. So we need to stay hydrated spiritually as well as drinking that water spiritually. It's better to go without literal water than to go without spiritual water. And how many people choose to go without literal water? You know, sometimes they're forced to, but you know, if there's water around, people's going to drink it. And so that's, that's the same way it is with spiritual. He in us is a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. He, he is a bountiful supply, but we cannot store up for the future. We must continue to drink or die spiritually every day. I get a drink every day. Sometime during the day, and sometimes more than once a day. Most of the time, more than once a day. But you know, as I need it, that's when I drink it. And sometimes, when I have been working outside, I may take a drink of water, and I think I've got plenty, but you know, sometimes I go ahead and take a little extra drink because I know it's replacing what I've lost. And you know, we, we don't lose spiritually but we need to take in what God has for us. Israel found no natural source of water. God had to supply it. This teaches us that nothing we can do and nothing the world can supply can supply our thirst for God or keep our souls alive. None can keep alive his own soul. That's found in uh, Psalms 22 and 29. And it goes on... Uh, 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 David goes on and writes in Psalms 42 and 2, My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. 
my soul thirsteth. And you know, I think there's another passage where he says, my heart panteth after water like a heart panteth after the brook. Yeah. I, think that's, I think that's a scripture, you know. And you know, he kind of making a, 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 a um, illustration at how a little deer running along and he comes to a brook and it's nice, clear water flowing there and that little deer's thirsty and so he takes a, takes a drink of it. That's kind of like we are. That's kind of what God looks at us as, that little deer that's taken in that, that spiritual drink that God has for us. How can our thirst be satisfied? By repentance, belief in Christ, yielding to Him. But I left out a word, yielding all to Him. Continue Bible study, prayer, and trust. No earthly source, no earthly source can sustain in the soul. A lot of people think money. A lot of people think money will sustain them in their spiritual. Oh my, how deceived they are because money, money does not uh, do anything for us there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read that last verse there again, 17 and 7. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the ch uh, chi chiding, chiding, that's hard for me to say, of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Naming the place. Moses put a name on the, this place. Moses named the place of this miracle. A wonderful miracle took place here. What shall he call it? He really let what the people had done give it its name. They had tempted the Lord, so he called it Massa. Tempted the Lord. That's what Massa means, is temp, tempted the Lord. Isn't that a terrible name to put on a place, you know? I live in Massa, tempted of the, or, or tempt the Lord. We don't want to live in Massa. We don't want to live in Massa or temptation there. They had chide and complained, so he named it also Meribah, or strife and contention. Well, I don't want to live in that place either. No, not at all do we want to live in that place. You know, that, you know, that kind of a name puts a bad name on us, you know, and it put a bad name on these people, the children of Israel here. But, you know, Moses probably did that to try and keep them keen to the calling of God and don't complain. You know, don't, don't complain because, you know, do you really want places like that named that. How sad that they had not done better to give it a better name. If our places were named for what, for what we do, what kind of names would they have? Let's think about that, you know. What kind of names would they have? Would it be rejoicing or would it be Maribah? You know, we, you know, it's 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 something to think about. Let's go to our uh, memory verse there. Now, fast forward after Jesus came, Jesus being that rock there, uh, a type of that rock. And now it comes down to John 4 and 14. Jesus is um, talking to the woman at the well. And he's, he, he's talking to her, and she's astonished by him even speaking to her because she being a Samaritan, him being a Jew, they didn't talk to each other. But you know, Jesus struck up the conversation with her by asking for a drink. And so here's, here's what he says 
after they discussed that. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Jesus gives living water. Jesus gives living water. Partake of that water even, I mean, more often than you partake of the water, physical water. That is more important than any physical water, the, the water that Jesus gives us. Jesus said he would give living water to his people. It is not water that we can see. We can't see that water. This water is in the heart. It is life. It gives one everlasting life. It is the Holy Spirit that Jesus sends to live in his people. As the Israelites needed material water, we need life-giving spiritual water. Material water flowed from the rock. Living water flows from Christ, the rock. I'll add that there to it. Water from the rock gave life to their bodies. Living water from Christ gives life to our souls. That rock is a type of Christ. We read in 1 Corinthians 10 and 4, They drank of that spiritual rock, rock, rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Paul didn't leave nothing to guess here. He said they, uh, they drank of that spiritual rock and followed them. And that rock, he even tells what it was, what, what it is, and that rock was Christ. As the rock was struck by the rod to make the water flow, so Christ was crucified to let his life flow out to lost sinners. Or, I, you, we could put, Christ was struck to let his life flow out to lost sinners. Christ was struck in that. See how, how it all is types and shadows there and how it all worked. And you know, Moses had to follow what God told him. He told Moses, strike that rock with your rod. And that's what he did. And that's what provided them with the drink that they needed. Now we should thank God for providing this life for us, the spiritual life. That's what he's talking about. We should thank him every day. You know, like, uh, 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 like the one song, if I had 10,000 lives in which to praise him, I couldn't praise him enough. You know, we only have one life. I mean, he's talking about 9,999 more lives. If you could praise him with all them lives, it still wouldn't be enough, you know, because that's how important eternal life is to us there. Do you have this living water? That's a question that we need to ask. Each one of us need to ask. I don't care where you're at in, the, in your Christian life. Do we have that living water? You know, the answer could be no. The answer could be, I don't know. The answer could be, yes, I do. But be honest with yourself as you ask that question. Be honest with the answer. And it's up to you. Only, only you know where you stand with God. Right. I can't tell you where you stand. You can't tell me where I stand. But you know, only you can, can tell where you stand. Do you have that living water? If not, go to Christ and ask Him for it. That's the simplest thing that can be done. The price has already been paid. The plan has already been laid out. All we got to do is jump in it and indulge in it and drink of that water that the rock has provided for us. Amen.